Hello, buongiorno, inichiwa, abinya. Hello everybody, welcome back. And today we are going to be doing pictures like this. Hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you ever so much, first of all, for all the kind comments I got off my last video. I really, really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, welcome to my family. If you like it, don't forget, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up or even drop me a message. Today, we're going to be doing some simple macro photography. And as you know, I love water drop photography. So we're going to be doing water drop photography. There's nothing going to be so simple. There's nothing going to be hard, should I say, with this. And it is something that everybody can do at home. I must stress this. It's all about being creative and finding stuff around the house that you can use. So what I'm going to be using today is just a copper wire. This copper wire is actually from another project I'm playing with, which I will release probably later in the year because it's hard work. But all I've done is stripped the strands at the copper wire. And this makes a fantastic, fantastic, should I say, objects for water droplet photography. It sticks on. What I tend to do, and I've done it already because it takes time, is I've just literally bent the copper wire to leave strips. And what I've done is I've done a quite a few of them. There's another one. There's the one where I could drop off a little water droplet on the end. There's another tree looking one. Here's one with three on. Just, just general, literal. And there's one I'm hopefully going to put a water drop on the top. It is so easy to do and it's not hard, to be honest. It's something I have done before, but I've got, to be honest, it's one of these things that it's there and then I do something and I tend to forget all about it because, but it's been quite a long time since I did this and I want to try and get myself back into the creative mood like i said all i've done is i've taken the plastic coating off the wire now this hasn't got to be speaker wire; it can be any electrical wire that's lying around it is fairly cheap to buy as well and all i'm going to do is i'm just going to get a strand or a couple of strands and you can just either break it off or pull it out like that and that is it i mean you probably won't see this but I will sort of show you it. I'm going to try and magnify in. There's different ways you can do it. You can either use cocktail sticks, needles. I've just got a little sewing needle. Just a tiny little sewing needle. And what I tend to do is just put it across the sewing needle and just pull it. And it gives you lovely kinks. And that virtually is it. Done. And the more you add, the better it is. Then all you've got to do is do a few, and then what we do is join them all together, and we end up with something like that. Then what I'm going to do is I've got a pair of old nail clippers, and we just nip the ends off to shorten it all up to make a picture. Then all I do is get some blue tack, my trusty blue tack, or modelling clay, or putty, or whatever you want to call it. Just break it off, and I get my wire, just sit it on the top, and then we've got our subject straight away. That, that is literally it. You can't go wrong with it. Now, some people have told me last time I did this, they couldn't get the water drops to stay on, but I've got a new method to how to get them to sort of stay on there and it absolutely works perfect. And a, a lot of people will agree with me that I've done this since. So I'm gonna try that. And that is this thing, my trusty little sprayer. And this sprayer is absolutely fantastic. It's that fine and moist. It helps build up the water droplets without them dropping off. And as soon as you build it up, you just pull it away. And that's it. Because it's soft, it means it doesn't rock your water droplets, meaning it holds on a lot better. So we're going to be using this. I'm just going to put these couple out of the way a bit. Because I don't want to squash them like I normally do. Because I'm trying to get used to these glasses and I don't know why every time I find something I'm like... <laughs> I feel like I'm blind with the glasses on. The whole idea of this as well today is... We're going to be using lights 
Now we could use a flash and bounce it off the card and come back. And some people have been asking me why I don't use a flash. I do use a flash a lot, but I try and tend to stay away from a flash because if you haven't got a flash, you're going to think you can't do it. So I'd rather not use a flash. And if you want to use a flash, it's only saying there's the water dandelion photography, which I'll leave a link up there or there, wherever it is. And then you'll see why about bouncing it off the card and come back. I have actually put these in milk and got some fantastic pictures, reflections and different things. But today, like I said, I'm just going to be using lights, simple lights. I better put that out of the way because I'm going to lose my pin. Put this out of the way. These out of the way. My lights. We're going to be using these small rig lights again. And this is laying mainly just to shine onto the back of the card, like I said, and they're fantastic. But what I'm going to be using today with them is I'm going to be using the little snoots. And the snoots just literally magnetically fit on. This means I can put the light where I want it because I don't want it spilling over. So I've got two of these little small rig lights. If you ain't got two, a normal torch will do. Just get some card and make a small snoot or even a small torch. You can get it fired on anyway. But that is literally that. Whoa. There we go. I'll put it up, Lee. I've told you. I can't see with these less on. Now, I've got some cards and I've found out, yeah, and I've realised that the best thing I've found for you to keep these cards standing up is I usually put something at the back of it or leaning up something. I've found that these little crocodile clips are absolutely ideal. And all you've got to do with them is just stick them on the sides of them at the bottom, like that. And this way, then it stands up, your card stands up exactly how you, how you want it, done. And as well, you can bend it and it stays bent. Or if you want to straighten, you can straighten it up or you can bend it back. So I'm quite happy with this little find and this little gadget. Who needs these special things with all these gadgets on that cost three or four hundred pounds just to hold a piece of card and a butterfly or whatever? A bit of feather, don't need it. My channel's cheap, cheerful. That's how we roll. So we got that all set up like that. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be getting the lights as usual and just come on, shining it onto background and moving it round. I'm just going to get it on, shine it to where I want it onto the back. But I'm not going to put it onto my subject. We're going to use the light that bounces off the card and comes back to light the water droplet up. Now, I've got my camera on a tripod. <coughs> this little thing, this little camera, this little OM Systems camera. A lot of people have been asking me about settings and ISO, the best way to, to, to get the ISOs, what they want. <clears throat> Me personally, if I'm doing still photography, I can slow that shutter down to what I want. Meaning I can get more light into the sensor. Meaning I can keep my ISO low. I think today's society of photographers is becoming a speed sort of photography, sort of fast food sort of, we've got to get a picture, we've got to get it edited, we've got to get it out, we've got to get it perfect. Well, no, we haven't. As photographers, if you if you are a professional photographer and you're doing it for a business, that's fair enough. But my way of doing photography is all about keeping the budget low, meaning we haven't got, you can use Lightroom. I've got Lightroom, I've got Topaz Labs. I've got different, I've got different all editing, but that's because I do video and I use it mainly for my video and I do do some pictures for customers and clients where they've got to be 100% perfect. But if you're doing it as an hobbyist, do we need to spend all this money? I don't need to spend money on Topaz Labs, but I've got it. But if you don't need to spend money on it, because if you get to know your camera well, you, if you're indoors doing still, you can work your settings out to keep your ISO low or to blend, to, to balance everything up. Meaning, you do not need to purchase Topaz. I mean, it is good, but today, 
we're all struggling for money so why should we go out and buy things we don't need when we got the stuff in the house and we can all keep doing it i think this is putting a lot of photographers off in a minute a lot of new people into photography i think that them coming in and them seeing people's pictures and posts and, and then getting flooded on the internet with different products for ed editing and when you add them all up it's bloody dear and i don't know about you but i haven't got the money to do that so you know i'm trying to do everything cheap and i'll still get decent pictures at the end of it less of a rant we'll carry on with the photography so all we're going to do today and it's the most simplest thing ever is we're going to use these cards again this one's just got a pinky one on the back We're going to get the first one in and we're just going to put it the back of our picture. We're going to put it there. Oh, but before I do that, I better show you the spray head. Anyway. So I know that that's the roughly the right distance because I've got little marks on my table. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to spray. Just use a spray. And build the sprays up, spilled it up. As you can see, the bubbles are starting to build up. Well, the droplets are starting to build up. This, yes, this takes longer to do, but you get better water droplets. As you can see, they're starting to go nice now. And gone. If you use normal pump spray, these are drop off. I'm going to leave that there now because I think I've got a nice picture. And that, to me, looks like a little apple tree. So I'm going to leave that like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swing the card right around. There we go. Then I'm going to put my camera on and get focused. And better put some light on it, me. I'm just going to shine the lights on the back, as we do. Just bend the tripod down. Put that one on. Bend the tripod down. Move it around. This is going to give us some fantastic pictures. All right, let me have a look at my settings. <coughs> right, I'm starting on off at f5.6. I'm not getting as close as what you think because. I want to see more of the branches, as you can see here now. I believe that works well. So I'm gonna leave it to five, I'm gonna start off at 5.6. I might go up, I might not. My ISO is on ISO 200, because that's a native for this camera. My shutter speed, as I dial through, it's telling me now that point Four of a second is the ideal picture. Okay, it's 0.4, but it might be 0.4, but I'm still on ISO 200. I can do a longer shutter speed and, and save money on editing equipment, not a problem. No, I don't quite like that one. I'm gonna just, just, gonna just focus in a little bit better. Push a light more forward. And there we go. <clears throat> that one is simply with the blue light and that's it. it it's, it's just light shining on it. I want to try some more colours though. Because I think this picture will make for a nice apple tree effect. Right, where do I put my card? So when I got my glasses on, I can't find them. Yeah, right. got a nice goldy one there, we'll try first. So we'll just get this out of the way. You can see the setup where it was. I'm just gonna pop this off. Put it on there, out of the way. Simply get these clips, whatever you wanna call them. Stick them on the bottom. Right, 
spot all my card rounds. I'm just going to roll a little bit. The bread spanking there. There we go. Whoa. That's a main colour. I'm going to take a couple more pictures of this. Put my glasses on, it works better. Not too bad, not too bad. Right, I like that, but I'm going to try another one. I'll put that one out of the way. I want to try this one. This one's the one that I'm going to put just a ball, a drop on the end. So what I've done is I've just got it sort of at the end. I don't know if we're going to see this on camera, but we will spin. I'll, I'll do something to get it on. Right, what I'm going to do is get my syringe. Now, this is a normal syringe, but it's pointed, and I keep telling everybody you need to have a sharp needle. The water reacts better, meaning the water rolls off. If you use blunt ones, you're going to be there all day and you'll be shaking trying to get them off. It don't work. If you know anybody who's diabetic, or you know, if you know a doctor and you just go in and ask, say, is there any chance I can have a sharp, please? Show them your pictures, what you do, and I'm sure they'll give you one. This was actually a Botox needle. They done no good for me. Right, let me just put a drop on there. And there you go. What I've done with that one is, I've wrapped the copper wire around the needle a couple of times, and it's formed a little loop. And then that way then, this means that the water droplet sits on the top, it sits on the top, I can take pictures. I want this to be a bit more like Lord of the Rings or something. Go on, say it, you look like Gollum. Oh, right, let's get a it sort of right. No. Turn the tripod round. Mm. Lighten it back up. That's better. That's got the light where I wanted. Just move that one. It sort of comes up, really. Nice. Now it's time to focus in again. I got it. We got it. We got it. We got him. We got him. I like that, but it's very, very bright. For some reason, it's shining. I ain't even move the camera. And it's just so bright. So what I'm gonna do now is the shut speed, I'm on a fourth of a second, point four. So I'm gonna bring that up now until I get something on like. And now that's allowing me to do it at a fortieth of a second, which is ideal. Take a look. That's pretty jassy, I should say. Them lines that come across the, the across off the paper really work well. Oh yeah, that's better. It should be a lot better as well. But I'm still on ISO two hundred, just working the shutter speed and the aperture to balance it out to keep it where I want. So that means that when I put it on the computer. I haven't got to really do any sharpening or use topaz or whatever to get the noise down. If I wanted to just polish it up, I could, I suppose. Right, have we got any more cards? Oh, Mel Goldie. Mel Goldie, I love my Goldie one. I've got to do this one, I like this, I love this little drop I'm gonna I will change to the one again in a minute. Let's go just pinch them on the bottom. Right. Who needs stands when you just got two crocodile clips on pound and that to the chase trip. Oh I like that. Take a quick shot and I tell you there again I do like that. For some reason it's giving me a silver look. Let me just see if I'm on. Yeah. Brilliant. 
sink of that one. All right, let's quickly get rid of this one. And we'll try, we've tried that one. Let's try this one, this little tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to get it sort of virtually in focus by moving, by just moving this first. So that I know that's sort of in focus. Then I can just sort of nip up to it and get it to spot on. I'm just going to drop the camera handle. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Just straight in. Get it nice. Perfect. Get the spray. Give it a spray. Let's get the build up. As you can see, just building up nicely. If I was to get closed, I can get them on a bit quicker. But it doesn't seem to work. I'd rather let it time. We haven't got a rush. We're photographers. And there's not a lot of mess for me to clean up. Meaning Mrs. H don't have a go at me. <laughs> All like that. I've got one right on the end of that one. Oh. See that? Okay. Let's put the silver card back over the top of it. Never even tested that. Make sure. I think I'll call that one the tree of life. That is so simple, just copper wire. That's all we need. Like I said, I'm going to put them up on the computer. We'll see what we think of them. Like I said, if you think you can add to it or whatever, let me know. But we'll put a few pictures of plug says and we'll have another quick chat. At least I got again trouble this week. No mess. To be fair, there is a bit of mess because I'm going to carry on in a minute and take some more pictures. I've enjoyed it that much. I'm going to carry on to see if I can create something a bit more spectacular and swirly with the wire. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you very much for getting to the end of it. If you have any comments, please feel free to interact. Let me know what you want. If you want any certain videos doing or you want something different, let me know. I'm always open to offers and it helps me as well. If I'm helping one person, I know surely it's got to help other people. So please drop me a message and let me know. I help you more keeping safe. And like I said, if it's the first time yeah, please feel free to put a thumbs up, a comment or even subscribe. It means a lot to me and makes me go up out the algorithm a little bit more. So, but until next time, stay safe and happy snapping.